America has often been described as a litigious country, and there's no shortage of examples of lawsuits we perceive as frivolous or silly. The thing nearly all lawsuits have in common, whether they have merit or not, is that there is a plaintiff and a defendant, and they are two separate entities. That said, every so often, it turns out that lawsuits get filed in which the plaintiff and the defendant are the same person. Number 10. John Fogerty was sued for plagiarizing himself. John Fogerty is the legendary lead singer and songwriter of the band Creedence Clearwater Revival. They'd hit songs like Fortunate Son and Bad Moon Rising. You'd be hard pressed to find many movies that are set in the 1960s and 70s that don't include CCR somewhere on the soundtrack. When Fogerty was working on his own solo album in the 1980s, he released a song called The Old Man Down the Road. It's a solid song, and it has that signature Fogerty sound to it. In fact, it had so much of Fogerty's signature sound that he was sued by the record label that still owns the rights to his previous work with his band CCR. The basis of their lawsuit was that Fogarty's new song sounded too much like Run Through the Jungle, which was, of course, a song that Fogarty also wrote and sang. So essentially, they were suing John Fogarty on behalf of John Fogarty for ripping off John Fogarty. In 1988, a jury decided that no, Fogarty had not ripped himself off by writing a song that sounded like one he'd already written. By that time, Fogarty said it had spent $400,000 more in legal fees than it even earned from the song itself. Luckily, several years later, he won a lawsuit against his old label to reimburse those legal fees. Number 9. A man sued himself for his own estate. In 1985, Arrest Lodi took himself to court. Or he tried to, at least. He was suing on the grounds that he was the beneficiary of a charitable trust. Plaintiff Lodi wanted control from Defendant Lodi. It was speculated this was some sort of tax scam he was trying to pull off, as confusing as it sounds. The problem was that after Lodi served himself with papers, he refused to respond. That meant he was almost awarded a judgment against himself, but instead, his case was dismissed. This in turn prompted him to appeal that decision. The appeal didn't get very far, as the court reasoned there could be no winner in the case or loser, since the same person would be both. The only benefit Lodi saw was that the court didn't force him to pay court costs for filing a frivolous lawsuit. Number 8. Robert Block sued himself for $5 million for violating his own rights. Every so often you hear a story about an inmate who learns law while behind bars in an effort to help themselves use the system to get out of prison. Maybe it's towards revisiting their own case or finding some precedent to help lower their sentence. Whatever the case, it involves a lot of time and effort. Robert Block didn't exactly follow that path for his own legal dealings. Brock was incarcerated at Indian Creek Correctional Center serving 23 years when he filed a $5 million lawsuit against himself. His reasoning was that before incarceration, he'd gotten drunk and violated his own civil rights. In his drunken state, he committed a crime that got him sent to prison. For this violation of his rights, he decided he owed himself $5 million. But because he was incarcerated, he would need the state to pony up the cash since he was unable to work and make it on his own. His plan was for $3 million to go to his wife and kids for their pain and suffering, and then for the other $2 million to be used to support himself after his 23 years in prison. And he was even willing to pay it back after he got out if the court ordered him to. Sadly, the court deemed the whole thing frivolous and dismissed it. Number 7. Barbara Bagley sued herself for wrongful death. In 2011, Barbara Bagley was driving in Utah with her husband Bradley when she lost control of the vehicle. No other car was involved, and details are sketchy, but the car ended up rolling and resulted in the death of Bagley's husband. Afterward, Bagley filed a lawsuit against herself for negligence in causing the death. So, how does this work? Bagley filed the lawsuit as the representative of her husband's estate. She was seeking damages to cover funeral expenses, loss of future financial support, the pain her husband would have suffered, and her own pain for losing him. Estate rep Bagley filed the suit against the Bagley that was a stand-in for her insurance company. So in other words, she was suing her own insurance company, claiming the accident was her fault, so she, by way of her insurance, should pay. Her insurance company had obviously not got any interest in paying specifically because the accident was all her fault. Initially, the case was dismissed, but then Bagley appealed the decision. The appeals court actually overturned the first judge's decision, claiming that there was nothing in Utah law that precluded her from suing herself. It's unclear how much money, if any, she actually won as a result of the lawsuit, but lawyers pointed out that by law, creditors got first dibs, so the lawyers themselves, as well as the hospital that treated her husband and anyone else in the mix, would have been paid from the estate first before Bagley was. Number 6. Herbert Barber sued himself for services he provided to the town. 
Suing oneself is by no means a fixture of the modern world. You can go all the way back to 1911 and find the case of Herbert Barber suing Herbert Barber. Barber worked as a tax collector in a town called Warwick. The town failed to pay him for his services, and so he filed a lawsuit to get $8,250.44 in compensation. One of the defendants was the town treasurer, whose responsibility it was to ensure that he was paid. The town treasurer was Herbert Barber. Surprisingly enough, Barber did not win, and the case was dismissed. Number 5. Thun van der Kuken sued himself to raise awareness of slavery in the chocolate industry. If you've ever seen free trade chocolate for sale, you know that there's a dark side to the chocolate industry built on the back of child slave labor. In fact, most of the chocolate you eat was probably produced using child slave labor. Journalist Thun van der Kuken learns about this in the early 2000s when he was investigating labor practices in West Africa. He was so moved by what he'd learned and eager to spread the word that he came up with a novel way to bring light to the issue. He ate chocolate and then turned himself into the authorities, saying that he had benefited from child slavery. The courts were not impressed and refused to prosecute, so he hired a lawyer and sued himself. At the same time, he started Tony's Chocolonely Company to sell free trade chocolate, and the company is still going strong to this day, even if the courts refuse to prosecute him. Number four, a Spanish artist sued himself for the right to install scaffolding. Santiago Surrogada is a man whose work straddles the line between art, performance, and architecture, a space not occupied by many. He began doing street architecture projects in the 1990s, including things like renting dumpsters and then using them as platforms on which to build playgrounds when the city refused to issue permits for building things like swing sets but would readily give out dumpster permits. Later, he came up with a novel idea for expanding the room in a house by adding it on in a similar fashion. In a project he called scaffolding, he vandalized a house with graffiti and then sued himself for the ability to install scaffolding on the same building, ostensibly to aid in the removal of that graffiti. The scaffolding was attached to the building and used as an extra room for several months in which people were able to live. Number 3. One Donald Trump company sued another. Donald Trump is no stranger to lawsuits, and he got so involved in one that he ended up suing himself, sort of. Some years ago, Trump Mortgages LLC took up residence in 40 Wall Street, a Trump building. Two separate entities, both under the Trump banner. If you recall anything about Trump Mortgages, it may be that it didn't last very long. Within a year, Trump Mortgages was no longer paying rent, so 40 Wall Street LLC had to sue Trump Mortgages LLC for the non-payment. The mortgage company didn't even reply to the lawsuit, so a judge ordered them evicted from the building. Number 2. Lothar Mauskat sued himself for being an art forger. Lothar Mauskat had a lot going for him. He had survived the Second World War, he had a pretty incredible name, and he was an accomplished artist. The problem with that third part is that no one really knew it. Mauskat was working as an assistant to art restorer Dietrich Fay, and they were hired by the church to restore some Gothic frescoes that had been revealed during a bombing raid. It took three years of work, but the restored frescoes became a point of German national pride. They even found their way onto two million postage stamps. Fay was lauded as a hero and a genius for his work, and that's why Mauskat sued himself. Faye was getting all of the money and the glory for the frescoes and numerous other works, but they were all frauds. Mauskat was an art forger, and Faye was taking the credit for his work. The problem was that no one believed him when he outed himself and his boss. His only choice was to sue himself so he could prove in court that he was actually an artistic genius capable of knocking off masterpieces. He pointed out inconsistencies in the so-called restorations. He had even hidden the face of a famous actress in one. Some of the other figures were guys who had been working nearby. There were even even turkeys in one, which certainly didn't exist in Germany at the time the paintings were supposed to have been made. Mauskat got prison time for his effort, his frescoes were destroyed, and despite his skill, he never achieved any fame later in life. But he did take everyone down with him, so at least there's that. Number 1. Peter Maxwell sued himself for workplace injuries Here's a familiar story. A worker gets injured on the job and sues the company for compensation. They win, and the company writes off the settlement. End of story. So, what happens when a self-employed person tries the same thing? If you're Peter Maxwell, you pull off one of the most brash, yet remarkable lawsuits in history. Maxwell owns a manufacturing company in Chino, California. He works at the company, on the floor, making foam carpet, and one day his sweater got stuck in a mixing machine. He was severely injured, so he hired a lawyer to help him sue his boss himself. He hired another lawyer to handle the suit on behalf of the company. You'll be surprised to hear that they agreed to settle the matter for $122,500. The company wrote off the settlement as a business expense, but the IRS was not amused. They sent a bill to Maxwell twice, one as employee and one as employer, to refund the amount. Maxwell returned to court and won when a judge decided he was entitled to the settlement and also entitled to write off the expense. 